the flock is going on? Welcome to FPL Today and welcome to this video about the new transfers coming into the Premier League and trying to figure out what they could do for our fantasy Premier League season. So let's get straight into it with the first signing joining Leeds that is Rasmus Christensen who was also wanted by Borussia Dortmund and Brentford but he has signed for Leeds for 10 million. The signing is Jesse March's second signing for Red Bull Salzburg. We'll talk about the other player later on in this video. And of course, keep watching the whole video for the biggest signing of this summer so far right at the end. If you don't know who it is, you need to be keeping up to date with the Premier League. But back to Rasmus Christensen, who has come from the top side in the Australian Bundesliga, Red Bull Salzburg. As we can see in his stats, and this is actually a player I've been trying to keep an eye on because I do play so rare. And it is good to get some players in some smaller leagues that are absolutely smashing it. Rasmus Christensen has smashed it in the Australian Bundesliga with Red Bull Salzburg. Now, these stats are compared to the rest of his teammates. And we will get into some players more in depth later on this preseason, where we'll go over their stats in their league and potentially in some of the top leagues in Europe. But for his team, he played 29 matches, which was the third highest out of his teammates, with 2,528 minutes played, which was first. Hopefully, that means he isn't very injury prone because, yes, Leeds need players that don't get injured. We also have seven goals and four assists in the Australian Bundesliga, which is great. And it's fourth highest amongst his teammates, which is pretty impressive for a right back. So maybe that is a sign of things to come when he makes his move to Leeds. Yellow cards, he only had one, which is pretty impressive, especially considering how many tackles he made in the Champs League, which we'll get into in a second. Also, goals per 90 at 0.25 and assists per 90 at 0.14, giving him goals and assists per 90 at 0.39. Now, that's just about three games for some sort of attacking action, which would be decent as long as he's priced well in the Fantasy Premier League. He also had 97 crosses made, which was the third highest for Red Bull Salzburg last year. And speaking of their Champs League performance, Red Bull Salzburg, Rasmus Christensen ranked first for total tackles per 90 in the Champs League last season, which is a very impressive number and could show that along with his yellow cards only being one in the Australian Bundesliga, that he is a good tackler and in games that aren't necessarily fantasy football like Sky Sports, those tackles could really help you out in fantasy football. Before we move on to the next signing, if you are enjoying this content, please do hit that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really does help the channel out and your support really drives me on to keep making these videos and keeps driving me on to talk about players like even Perisic. And hopefully you like the new graphics for player stats. We've got even Perisic coming in on a free transfer to Tottenham Hotspurs. He's reuniting with Antonio Conte after his contract ended for Inter Milan and Inter Milan couldn't agree terms with him. He's got 113 caps for Croatia and if you remember scored in the World Cup final in 2018. However, he is 33 years of age, which isn't typical for a Spurs signing, but it does show that Spurs are backing Conte in the transfer market because it's a player Conte has worked with before. And let's be fair, Conte's made it very clear he believes Spurs weren't backing him enough in the transfer window before. What you do get with Perisic is a winner, though. He has won the Serie A title with Conte at Inter Milan in 2021. And the Champs League he won with Bayern Munich when he spent a season on loan there. And he has plenty of top-level experience. He'll provide cover for Son and Kulisevsky, but notably under Conte, he played as a left wing-back. So his position in the Fantasy Premier League game will be very important. If he's a midfielder or a defender, he would be much more viable than if he is placed up front, which is another position that he has played in previously. But if he's a defender, Perisic could be fantastic. I mean, if we look at the stats, he got eight goals last season and six assists, which was third best in the Inter Milan squad. He also played 35 games in total with 2,821 minutes played, which again puts him in the top five in Inter Milan. And as you can see, Goals per 90 at 0.26 and assists per 90 at 0.19. Put him at goals and assists per 90 of 0.45. So almost a goal or assist every other game. He also had 60 key passes for the side last season into Milan, which put him second best for key passes 
in that team. So Perisic could be a sneaky purchase for your FPL sides this season. The next item we go on to, and this comes with a little bit of a pinch of salt because, of course, game time won't be secured for him. But we're talking about the biggest transfers, and I thought Fabio Carvalho is someone Liverpool have been trying to get for a while now. Liverpool did miss out on him on deadline day in January, but he is an outstanding 19-year-old talent who was wanted by Manchester United, Chelsea and Arsenal as a youngster. And just a little bit of side information. He did play for Ballam FC, which is quite close to where I live. So that was something that I learned while doing my research, which was uh, surprising to me because Ballam FC is not particularly well known for developing young talent. And he did come from Benfica's academy back in Portugal. So from Benfica's academy in Portugal to Ballam FC. Surprising, but his coaches at Ballam FC said he was brilliant technically. And also he has gone on to have a great season for Fulham last year getting 11 goals and 7 assists in the championship, of course. That put him second for goals and third for assists. And also, he had goals per 90 at 0.35 and assists per 90 at 0.22, giving him goals and assists per 90 at 0.57, having 78 shots on goal and 37 of those being on target. So, he probably won't get into the starting 11 straight away, but should Liverpool pick up some injuries, Carvalho could be a great player to bring in. In some points of the season. We now go back to Leeds United as they've signed another player from Red Bull Salzburg like I hinted at earlier and that is Brendan Aronson who signed on a five-year deal for 29 million euros or 24.7 million pounds. Aronson is primarily attacking midfielder but he is also capable of playing in a range of roles and it is his versatility that is probably what attracted Jesse March into bringing in another player he has worked with before. Having a look at his stats, they don't stand out as much as Rasmus Christensen's does, as he played 26 matches, 1,889 minutes played, 4 goals and 4 assists, putting him 7th for goals for Salzburg and 4th for assists for Salzburg. His goals and assists per 90 is at 0.38, which put him at 12th for Red Bull Salzburg as well, so he's not ranked that highly amongst his Red Bull Salzburg teammates last season. But, of course, he could go on to be impressive at Leeds United and he is under a manager that he is used to working. And finally, we get on to the big boy right at the end of the video. Manchester City, of course, activated the release clause for Erling Haaland and the total value of it comes to around £85.5 million, although apparently a lot of that is agent fees and add-ons. So, what a great bit of business by Man City, of course, Erling Haaland considered one of the best strikers in the world right now and they've got him in today's market for a significantly cheap price. Before we get onto the stats of how he performed compared to his Borussia Dortmund teammates and you know he's going to be number one in quite a few of those, in Europe's top five leagues to put it in perspective since 2020 January 18th Erlen Haaland ranks third for goals per 90 with 1.04 goals a 90. That's a goal a game. This is ahead of Mbappe who had 0.88 and just behind the likes of Luis Muriel at 1.06 and Lewandowski at 1.23 goals per 90. Ronaldo is also in the top five. He is behind Mbappe with 0.85 goals per 90. So that shows the kind of numbers that Erling Haaland is putting out compared to some of the elite strikers in the world right now. If we look at his stats compared to the Borussia Dortmund players. He was first, of course, for goals with 22 goals scored and eight assists put him second for assists in the Borussia Dortmund side. As you can see, minutes played, he was seventh with 1,911 minutes, only 24 matches played, which put him ninth amongst his teammates. So we can see he managed to get 22 goals and eight assists, 30 goal contributions in total in FPL in 24 games and was still the best player at his club for goals scored, despite the lack of minutes. Goals per 90, like I said, 1.04 in that season. And assists per 90 at 0.38, giving him a goals and assists per 90 of 1.41. And also he had 74 shots on goal with 31 on target. And also 24 key passes. Now, I do plan on making another video on Erling Haaland to go a little bit more in-depth into him because Bundesliga stats are something I can delve into a little bit more. So we will compare him to the rest of the Bundesliga I'm sure he'll be battling with Lewandowski for quite a few of those stats and we will also look at him potentially 
at his time in Austria for Red Bull Salzburg, which we talked about a lot today, to be fair, although I don't believe I have access to Australian Bundesliga stats like I do the Bundesliga. And also we will look into a bit how he might feature in that Manchester City side and if we should bring him in straight away because the last person from the Bundesliga striker that we brought in straight away, or at least I did, didn't particularly do that well and has only really started scoring at the tail end of last season. Anyway, that is it for this video. So if you have enjoyed it again, your support is massive on this channel. So if you could like, subscribe and hit that notification bell, it would mean the world to me. And thank you for tuning in as always. I've been JNO. This has been FPL Today. And remember, it's all about the game.